lot of you guys probably already know this company. Quartermaster. It's new to me. This is their product flyer, subject to change. What do you think about this one? QSE2 Ricardo Tubbs. I kind of like that one. It is funky. It's non-traditional. It's kind of cool. Maybe a good fight knife. I don't know. Never held it. Haven't used it. Does that look like a shark or what? QSE4, the Furley. Eh. Not really digging it. Not me. This looks like a Casper from CRKT years ago. Really resembles the Casper lines. QSE5. It's called the Roper. They say about Quartermaster, giving them some love here in the Nut and Fancy Project Knife Show. It's 2015, by the way. Quartermaster Ordnance creates cutlery in small batches. Therefore, this catalog should be used as a general reference to see the wide variety of finishes and creative modifications we made to each of these models. Please go to our website, it says. Now, then it kind of, kind of goes uh, a little funky for me. Uh, uh, you guys know my, my knife tastes. I don't hide them. I'm pretty consistent with them. Like this. Uh, that's just not me. I'm not a big karambit guy. And some of these are cool. Some of you guys may just rave about them and love them. And, and that's totally cool. I'm showing them on camera for you guys that might like them. Then you can seek them out and check them out. Maybe you want to buy one. Different strokes for different folks. You'll never see me gear check with this one. The QTR 5TC. Now, guys who've been watching the knife show for a long time, it, trivia question. Why do I not generally like a karambit? If you said because it has limited utility, you are correct. Because I can fight with a tactical folder. I say the word fight. Emergency defensive use, like I've always said. But a karambit for me, can I peel an apple with that? And I'm calling this a karambit. It may have another specialized name. I don't know. No, you can't. Hawkbill, karambit. They're kind of in the same genre. That's the QTR1 HM Murdoch. That's kind of a cool knife. Kind of a chunky EDC knife, which a lot of guys like. QTR2, 3, Hannibal Smith. Now, the one I'm reviewing now is not even in the catalog, and I, I do like this model. And that's why I'm breaking it out into its own KRV. And here it comes right now. It is the QSE7 Spicoli. These are the kind of lines I'm talking about, guys, right here. No surprise, right? It's a classic drop point blade. This is in 154 CM steel. I kind of like this knife. It's chunky, which may surprise you. It's almost 6 ounces, 5.8 ounces for this particular quartermaster. But there's a lot of guys that like that. You know, and you know, once in a while I represent it. And just because I'm not totally digging the SAWC of an item, sometimes I'll still do a review on it. This is a, a prime example of that. Because I know there are some TMPers that love these knives. And this, the feel of this knife is, as you can imagine, at 6 ounces for this size, is substantial. It is a titanium frame lock, by the way. It feels heavy enough to be a stainless steel frame lock, which I don't care for too much anymore. I reviewed plenty from, you know, 08 to, what, 13, and then I, maybe 12, and I was like, ah, I'm just sick of, tit or not titanium, but stainless steel frame locks. I, I just wasn't digging them anymore. I mean, I'll stick with that. I, I don't. Uh, titanium is a little bit more second cool for me. I like it. And that's what this one is. Titanium frame lock, and look at the blade, first off. The shape, I, I said I like. It is a hollow ground. And I said a 154 CM, I'm sorry, it's not, it's CPM 154. So it's a powder metallurgy steel, 154 variety. I don't go over the steels in depth anymore. We've been doing this long enough that we don't have to. It's just wasted air time. That's a great steel. I like it. Hollow ground, don't mind that at all. Classic, beautiful lines. There's flats right here for sharpening. I like that. This is really functional jimping on there. It's kind of, you know, open more coarse jimping, stylistic, functional, absolutely. All that's good. 
there's the tip right there. I'll put it against the box so you can see a little bit better out there. What I was getting at, and you can see it right here, is the thickness of the blade. This is this is a chunky little mother right here. 0.2 inches in thickness. So just shy of a quarter inch in thickness. So some of the weight is coming from that, albeit it is a hollow ground blade that saves some micro ounces, perhaps. So if you like a thick EDC knife, I don't know if I would classify this as a tactical blade. Maybe I would. Then check it out. Could be worthwhile. Will you ever carry that? Nothing. If I gear check you, will you have that on you? <laughs> um, honestly, don't ask, the, don't ask the question if you don't want the honest answer. And There's no way. No way. For instance, and I do this when I do my KRVs. What am I carrying right now? Um, and this is never set up. I'm never making it up. I'm not ever going to say, oh, I'm going to do a knife review. So let me just impress the guys with this fake EDC. I don't do that. It's going to be the Almar Eagle. Yeah, Saber Ground Almar. What a great knife that is. That's all HOF right there, dude. That is a big blade, super lightweight. I generally like the flat ground versions, but I like this one too. Oh, by the way, Cutlery Shop has the orange version of this. Limited edition. So Jeff and company, if you go over to Cutlery Shop, if you like this knife, limited edition orange, it's not cheap. Almar products just aren't cheap. But this is, uh, I'm showing this uh, to just show you what I'm EDCing with today. It's how light, thin, stuff I've talked about lots. Oh, by the way, that's not the only only one. It's paired up with a black tie knife sock twitch. Oh, now that's a sick little pair right there. Got a little piece of skateboard tape right there. Hey, nothing. I didn't know you're still into knives, dude. You hardly do care of these anymore. I totally am into knives. I just think the knife industry, pretty much all of 2014 and maybe 15, we'll see. It's it's just kind of stagnated for what I like. You know, I go, I bounce into the manufacturer's websites once in a while, and I, I'm just not seeing a lot of stuff that's turning me on. Maybe you are. You know, maybe this is a good example. I think a lot of guys, once again, will love this. Maybe I'm just not keeping up with the industry. Like this knife. I mean, it, that's, I don't want to pick on, what is it, the Thomas Magnum? A lot of guys will like it. There's, It's not a classically designed blade. And there's some others. I went on the Quartermaster website. Guys will dig it. I don't. And I don't apologize for that, by the way. I do not. It's it's just my taste, and that's what you dial into the show for. That's it. How about philosophies of use on this? Uh, I kind of mentioned tactical blade. I think it's lacking traction. I mean, it's a smooth scale. There's there's nothing on the side. Yeah, you have that coarse run of jumping on the top of the spine, but I think it's it's basically an EDC knife. A, a masculine EDC knife. The guys, oh, look at how cool this is. Uh, it, the speed on this and the lockup are really phenomenal. It's a flipper, as you can tell. No thumb studs, of course, to worry about. Lockup just is perfection. They, ha they have what they call a chain ring pivot point. Adjustable if you need to. Let's take a look inside. Get some light. Uh, you got enough light. You can see it. And instantly, this is the Blade HQ version, and you might be able to see down here, they have their logo right there, Dave. That's kind of cool. I, I actually love how Blade HQ does that, and I do that with my runs of knives, which are very rare, by the way. I rarely do runs of knives, but when I do, I make it special. I, I don't know if you can see it well. I kind of wish they would have made it more obvious, but I, I was talking to Jake about it, and maybe the reason they didn't, Jake at Blade HQ, I'm talking is because maybe some guys love this knife, but they don't want a big old Blade HQ logo on the side. I get that. Trust me, I get it. Uh, there's your lock bar engagement, and it is not a titanium lockup, which I really like. Every titanium frame lock should have this. A steel inset. So it's steel on steel, and it's replaceable if and when you wear it to that degree. But there's your timing on it. There's no lock bar stabilizer on it. I kind of wish it had it, but for the price point, which is kind of up there, if I'm not mistaken, it's around $220. I think it should have it. I mean, some of the Kershaws at this price point have it. Uh, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, lock bar stabilizer will be just a disc right here. So if you give it to your buddy or someone who's not a knife guy, 
and they tweak that that lock bar way over you can actually have some problems okay and what I do is I always put my finger right here when I don't have a stabilizer and do it like that for what it's worth I'll show you the handle right here see the milling I still love just flow through pivot simple construction that's probably my favorite manually constructed knife this style the flows through and I'm not going to pick on the Almar at all. It's definitely not flow through. I mean, it's a traditional lockback. Pretty much every knife you carry in your pocket is going to be a compromise, right? It's just where are you focusing your use of the knife? This one is an emergency defensive knife for me. And all, oh, oh, by the way, this is a great food knife too. Great bread knife. This Almar Eagle is so good. But it's not open back. It's more traditional. This doesn't really matter to me. One thing I, I, I do not like, and it's a trend in the industry, and Kershaw is way, way over the top on this. And it will be a trend, and it's going to go away. It will vaporize in the wind. It's this black wash finish. Uh, it's all over Kershaw's. At least in 2014 it was. I, I'm not a fan. It's maybe you guys are. You go, oh, I love the black wash finish. I'm not. I do dislike it. I don't think it's good looking. I know it's kind of a worn, uh, what do you say, Armageddon style finish. Uh, that's just me. I like classic finishes and I like tactical finishes too, just not the black wash. Almost sounds like backwash, but I'm saying black, black wash. How's that pivot, dude? Well, not pivot, but the clip. I actually like the clip. It's not super deep carry and there is a substantial amount of knife that protrudes from your pocket and it's a heavy knife I, I like deep carry clips always will no apologies for that either it comes with a second clip by the way the quartermaster spicoli that was a funny movie though by the way fast times at ridgemont high sean penn's funniest role so lefties rejoice it's a flipper so no thumb studs and you can change it and it is tip up carry which i like now, if we're going to go to the realm of $220, and I'm ballparking that, could be more, could be less, recommended dealer at the top, you got to know that that's going to open up a lot of options for you. Now, in some videos, I would throw five other knives on the table for your consideration. I'm just going to throw one for this KRV. This is a knife that if you gear check me, I have carried it a lot and I will in the future. I would choose it head and shoulders above the Spicoli, just for me, my likes, the Microtech SOCOM. By the way, did you hear that? Listen to that sucker comes out. And in the review of that knife, this is so HOF, it's not even funny right here. This is a user. This is an HEC knife for me, man. High-end carry. That's a whole philosophy video here in the knife show. Check it out if you're super bored. That knife is insane. It's insane. Now, if you like a thick blade, and by the way, the SOCOM comes and goes in the Microtech lineup. They'll produce a knife and discontinue it. The finishes may be discontinued forever. Then if, then if and when it comes back, it may be changed. So snapshot in time, this was reviewed here um, three years ago. This is a great knife. And I'm bringing it to the table to show you for about the same price this is a knife choice and to me that's fascinating right some guys will be all over this they'll say spicoli is more my style i like the looks of it i like that it is smaller for edc utility tasks i do like the black wash finish i love that it's chunky it definitely is a strong knife i did not test this this was on loan so i'm not testing it not doing cutting tests with it i have from what I know about it, no doubts that it's a really strong knife. I know from my own use and from cutting, this is a strong knife. Yeah, and the steel on this, this is S35 on the SOCOMs, insane. Great knife. It has some quirks too. It's tipped down, right? It's not perfect. Blade to handle ratio on the freaking SOCOM though. Look at that, dude. It's just perfection. Let's check it out on the Spicoli. And let's check out blade centering. Really nice job from Quartermaster on the centering. The retention. 
really about right. Just right. Yeah, that's a, it's a cool knife. I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm giving it airtime because it is a cool knife. Maybe not my style. I wouldn't spend the money on it, but I know a lot of guys that would. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I said it or not because the battery died. But once upon a time, I put a whole bunch of options on the table. I've kind of been thinning out the options <laughs> through the web store. NothingFancyBigCartel.com. Once in a while, I will sell some knives. Always at a loss. And, and use money to buy something else. There's a couple knives that will never go anywhere. This is one of them that, you know, the Microtech. And I don't mean to, like, put the spotlight on that knife. But I'm talking about value. You know, I, I'm going to represent my preferences honestly. Still a cool knife. And like I said here, you may see some in this catalog. You go, oh, that's insane. Like, maybe some of y'all look at that and go, oh, the Baracus, a QTR2. I'm so on that one. You know, different strokes, dude. That's my review on this knife. Go check it out on their website. Gave them some love here in TMP. See ya.